Okay, so we copied. I'm going to show you one other thing and then we'll do another example. Um, so with reading and writing, if you look at the definition for IO reader and writer, let's go over the reader. You pass in a slice of bytes. Okay, remember that the slice of bytes, you can modify it. Remember how with an array you can't modify it because it's a copy? But with a slice, it basically includes a pointer inside of it. So you can modify it. So what it does is it takes that, that slice of bytes we might have, right? Um, uh, right here. So we have this sort of, you know, zero, one, two. You just have a slice of bytes, and what it's going to do is it's going to go to each one and, and replace it with what it can. And so it uses the length of the slice of bytes to know how much to read. Okay? So it's like, this has one, two, three, four, five. It has five bytes. So I'm going to read five bytes from the disk and put them in the slice. Now you can read the details of how it does that here. They're very, there's very specific instructions. You know, it reads up to the length. It returns the number of bytes read. If there's an error encounter, it returns that. But and then they tell you, they warn you that it might use the rest for scratch space, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's all these other things it might do. Uh, but in general, what it's doing is filling that slice. Okay, it's filling that slice with bytes from the thing that it's reading from. Okay, in our case, it's filling it from a file. Once again, Taylor, this is going back to the fact that if we have a large file that our RAM cannot handle because it's so large, this is the way that it slices, parses it out or slices it up so that we are able to. Yeah, kind of. So th this gives us, we could give it a really, really big slice of bytes and then read the whole file at once. That works okay. Uh, this gives us the flexibility to do it in smaller chunks of the <coughs> Um, now notice that write, the writer interface, looks very similar, right? So it takes a slice of bytes as well. So these two methods are almost identical except for their name, okay? And this one takes in those slice of bytes and it's going to write it to the disk or whatever it's writing to. Um, okay. So, sorry. P? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. What P stands for? Is that a variable? Yeah. The writer itself. Write P or read P. But um. But yeah, it doesn't matter. It's a slice of byte. Right? That's all you need to know. Um. Okay. So we often have to write code that, that interacts with readers and writers. And here's here's what I'm going to show you. Um, we're using these helper functions. If we had to do this manually, so when I open a file and oh, let's go back to copy here. And I start reading from it. I'm typically going to have a loop. Okay? Now this is our infinite loop. I'm going to do something like make some bytes. So I'll say b's colon equal make a slice of bytes, let's say 100. And then I'm going to say source file dot read. Um, I just replace the variable with the part code. I'm going to give it that slice of bytes, and that's going to fill that slice of bytes. And it's going to return the number of bytes it read and an error, okay? So what's gonna make this tricky is there's a lot of things we have to do when we use read directly like this. We have to make sure there was no error. You know, do something with error. I'm just gonna. We also have to check n. See, because it doesn't necessarily read 100 bytes, it reads up to 100 bytes. So it may only read five bytes, particularly if the file's not 100 bytes long, it can't read 100 bytes, okay? So it will fill some number of bytes less than or equal to 100. It could be zero bytes, okay? So we have to check for that too. If n is equal to zero, we probably break, okay? Because our loop's done, because we're not reading any more bytes. Um, actually, we need to change this condition too, because uh, normal 
reader will do like that. And that's not really an error, that's what we expect. So we expect the loop to finish with end of file, and so here we would run a branch. Okay? But if it's some other error, if it's not end of file, that must have been a, a real error, and so we'll want to log that. Like I said, we have to handle the end of zero case. When we're doing stuff with the data, we have to take these like that, right? Because now I need actual data. And then I need to do stuff with that. So let's say I was just printing it. Okay. My point with this example is to show you that working with read directly requires a lot of work. Okay. You kind of have to chug through. Because there's a lot of subtleties to how it, it works. But it actually turns out we rarely have to write this kind of code. Because we normally use those helper functions which do it for us. Okay. I'm going to show you what they're doing. So actually we could go see that in IOUtil. So let's go to go.org slash IO slash IOUtil. And we go look at the definition of read all. It says return this read all. So let's go look at that guy. Okay. Uh, creates a new buffer and then calls buffer read from. But we'd have to go look at the definition of that. So we go to that was in bytes. So let's go to the bytes. Go to our order slash bytes. There's a new buffer in here. Returns a new buffer, and then it's going to call this read from. All right, let's go. OK. That, that code looked a little familiar, maybe? A lot of subtlety in here, right? But we have read. It's checking in, right? It's doing stuff with errors, end of file, break the for loop, the infinite for loop. Okay? A lot of subtlety here, though, right? There's a lot going on. Um, and some of it's documented, you know. Not enough space in the buffer, double the size of it, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, So, okay. So normally we don't have to write this kind of code, but you can if you have. Okay. Um, all right. So one of the things about this that, that can be a little uh, hard to, to do is that if I were to do this and read a single byte at a time, that would make some of this easier, but it'd be really inefficient. Okay. Asking the operating system for one byte and doing that a lot is really expensive. You really need to do it in batches. Okay. Thankfully, there's a library that does that for us. Okay. So if we go to go.org slash buff IO, package buff IO implements buffer IO. It wraps an IO reader or writer object, create another object that also implements that interface, but provides buffering and some help for textual IO. Okay. So we can use a buffer reader or a buffer writer to implement that, doing it in chunks. Okay? In particular with the writer, writing a single byte is also expensive. It'd be better to write a lot of bytes. By using a buffer writer, I can write a single byte and then call flush and it'll do it. Okay? And then I don't have to worry about that. Just flush. Um, and it'll flush automatically if I reach a certain size. And it a good or you call it. Um, so we can use this guy, okay? And I can show you how to use them, but basically the idea is that this new reader returns a reader. This reader also influences read, okay? So, um, I can say, Buffered reader, buffio dot new reader, give it the source file. And I can use the buffered reader anywhere I use the file. So I could, you know, pass it to copy. Um, so just, just recognize that anywhere that anything takes a reader, it can also take a buffered reader. It also works. Okay. Um, but it will be doing the buffering behind the scenes. 
So in other words, if, if this thing was reading one byte, uh, the buffer reader might read a thousand bytes and give it one byte. And then the next time it called read, it would read from this buffer, not from the file. Until it reached the end of the buffer and then read from the file again. And so it makes it more efficient. Okay. Um, we don't, I mean, we may see some examples where we use the, the buffer reader or writer directly. But there is one thing we use a lot of, okay? And that's the scanner inside of Buff.io. All right, there is this scanner, new scanner. You give it a reader, and it gives you a scanner. And scanner has a scan method that returns true or false, and then a text method, which returns block of text. So we can use scanner, and the default behavior for scanner is to read something by lines. So it'll break up our big file into the lines of the file. And then we can say a loop, and then read the text from each one. So let's see an example of that. I have my source file, and then I can create a scanner. So I can say scanner colon equals buffio.newscanner. I give it a reader. Remember, source file's a reader, so I can do that. And then I say for scanner.scan. And then I can say the line is equal to scanner that text. The way this works is every time scan is called, it moves to the next line of the text. And each time you call text, it gets the current line. Okay. And then I can print that. Um, we're just going to ignore that. Okay. This, we should be able to run. Okay. Let me go. File example, go install, and then um, file dash example. Okay, printed text two. That's because it read hello text, and hello text has text two in it. Okay? So this looks almost identical to what we saw before. It's like catting it, right? That's because what we're doing is we're reading a line from the file, and then we're printing the line from the file. So it's basically identical, right? The, the end result. Now, where it's subtly different is if I do this, let's say I put those three angle brackets before each line, and let's say I have more than one line in my file. All right, so I have three lines in that file. And then if I run that, there we go. See how it added the things before each line of the file? So if you need to interact with a file line by line, use a scanner. And it will break up your file into lines and allow you to work with it. Everybody following this code? It's pretty simple. Um, I mean, as far as the amount of lines. All right, we get our reader. We hand it to buff and scanner. Then we loop four standard out scan. So that gives you each line. This loop happens one line, read line. Get that line and then print it out. You can do anything you want with this line. So now we can do a problem. And the problem is create a program which converts all the text in a file to uppercase and writes the standard out. But that doesn't actually use the line by line, does it? I'm going to change this up. <laughs> so converts all the text to, to file uppercase. Uh, let's just change it to which converts all the text, uh, the, the first character. of each line in a file to uppercase, okay? So this should become line number one, line number two, line number three, okay? So let's make that program. Everybody following what it's supposed to do? I want to read a file that has this, and I want to write a file that has this. Though you can just print it to the standard out. You don't have to write a file. In fact, we don't. The problem says not to write a file. It just says to write it to standard out. So you're copying that and changing it. That's just an issue, right? I'm saying you can use uh, the, the pro this program here as a template. Yeah. And you just need to 
do whatever you need to do for this guy. Right? You put that on the scratch. It was there. Mm -hmm. 